I'm going to create all-time World Cup 11, identifying the most influential and game-changing player from every tournament. Then we will scout a youth academy talent as similar to the original player as possible, with the aim of creating the Champions League winning team eventually. And we are starting from the goalkeeper position. There were a lot of goalkeeping masterful performances during the World Cup history. Players like Dinozov and Gianluigi Buffon were absolutely crucial for Italy in 1982 and 2000. But there is one player who elevated goalkeeper role on the pitch to the next level. Although in 2014, Lionel Messi was named as the FIFA player of the tournament. And cause we are going to take only one player per tournament, I decided to go with players from the winner teams only. So Manuel Neuer will be the first player in our team with his unbelievable performances on Brazilian pitches. And we got lucky right from the beginning, as we already had a talented German goalkeeper in our youth academy, in Jonathan Haas, a 55 rated keeper with up to 94 potential and mind-blowing 17 diving. And this kind of utterly low values for some stats are going to be the trend during this video. Anyways, Haas is the first player in our team. Our first scouting mission is set in France, where we are searching for a midfielder in the center of the field, with playmaking capabilities capabilities to represent 1998 World Cup winner and maybe the best player to ever play for Le Bleu, Zinedine Zidane. He was the hero of the final match against Brazil, scoring a brace and securing the first World Cup trophy for his country. Later that year, he would won the Ballon d'Or and would receive the Legion of Honor as well. We got two talents to choose from to represent Zidane in our team. Mathieu Pierre, 16 years old center midfielder with 1.1 million euros market value and Jean Schmidt, another 16 years old center midfielder with slightly higher market value. These two players are extremely similar in terms of stats as well, although Pierre is a little bit higher rated right now, but we are going to go with Schmidt purely because of his high potential. We have found our next player as well while scouting in France. Pierre Gillet, 625,000 market value on 15 years old. He is currently 58 rated with very well rounded stats and 5 playstyles as well. Gillet is going to represent in our team 2018 World Cup winner. France national team in Russia was one of the most balanced team in World Cup history with such stars like Antoine Griezmann, Paul Pogba and Olivier Giroud. But I decided to go with one of the nicest and most loved footballer around the globe, Engolo Kante. Thank you. Next up we are heading to Germany to search for a ball playing center back. Despite being the brightest player in 1974 World Cup, Johan Cruyff did not manage to win it. It was West Germany who stood in Netherlands way with Kaiser Franz leading the team. Franz Beckenbauer was a versatile player who started out as a midfielder but made his name as a central defender. He is often credited as having inventing the role of the sweeper. He is one of three men along with Mario Zagallo and Didier Deschamps to have won the World Cup both as a player and as a man. Manager. Milo Klein is the player for Franz Beckenbauer, with almost 2 million market value and 85 to 94 potential. His default position on the field is center defensive midfielder, and it will take a lot of time for him to be converted to a center back. 125 weeks to be precise. The problem is that Klein, as pretty much each and every youth academy player, has microscoping stat for head inaccuracy. Only 5! I don't know how it is even possible. Next player in our team is an attacker, the player who is broadly considered as the best player in World Cup history. Brazilian football icon Pele has won three World Cup during his international career, the only player to do so in the history of the game. He also is the youngest player to win a World Cup. He was a worldwide sensation in 1958 and was nicknamed Orei following that tournament. Leonardo Ribeiro is the player we have found in Brazil. He does have 700,000 market value and up to 94 potential. Only 56 rated striker, he lacks on dribbling and head inaccuracy. It is becoming a pattern for FC25. One of few defenders to ever become the Ballon d'Or winner. The only defender in history to have won the FIFA World Player of the Year. 2006 World Cup winner Fabio Cannavaro is going to be the central center back in our team. To represent the player nicknamed the Berlin Wall, we scouted Giuseppe Bianchi, 17 years old center half with decent market value and great potential on him. He is currently 57 rated, which is not bad at all, to be honest. 
Next up, we are going to add another attacker to our team representing Brazil. Ronaldo El Fenomeno was the youngest member of the 1994 World Cup winning Brazilian national team. In 1998, he made the final with Brazil one more time and received the golden ball as the player of the tournament. But Brazil lost the cup to hosting country France and Ronaldo himself suffered seizures hours before the kickoff. Despite having serious injuries one after another, he reached the World Cup glory one more time in 2002 by scoring a brace in the final and receiving the golden boot as the tournament's top scorer. Apart from that, he is the second top goal scorer in World Cup history after Miroslav Klose. Francisco de Souza is a player we decided to go with just because of his potential and playstyles. He is currently 16 years old, only 54 rated, but with 5 playstyles. Hopefully he can live up to his potential, which is currently in the range of 81 to 94. Next player in our team is one of the best players in the history of the game and probably the most controversial winner in our team. From scoring a goal with his hand and claiming that it was God's hand afterwards, to netting the unbelievable solo goal, one of the best in competition's history, Diego Maradona made 1986 World Cup in Mexico, a one-man show long before Messi did in 2022. He scored five times in that tournament and created five goals for his teammates. And despite losing 1990 World Cup final, he remains one of the most successful players in competition's history. And and we did found a brilliant talent to go with. His name is Hernan Sierra, 17 years old Cam, with 2.3 million market value, which is fantastic. He's currently 64 rated, with all rounded stats and brilliant pace on him as well. Overall, a good talent to play behind Ribeiro. Next player is going to be from 1990 winner West Germany. Another iconic German player, Lothar Matthäus, won the Ballon d'Or that same year, following captain in West German side to the World Cup triumph. 15 years old Felix Werner is the player to represent Mateus in our fantasy team. He is currently 58 rated center defensive midfielder and needs 120 weeks to be converted to play lower on a pitch. Although he has center back as the secondary position, this doesn't make any sense. I am hoping he is going to fix it in upcoming patches. <laughs> Next iconic player in our team is a player who has just announced his retirement from football. In 2010, Spain won their only World Cup to this day, beating Netherlands in the final. Dutch national team is the only team to never won a single World Cup despite making final three times. And in South Africa in 2010, it was Andres Iniesta who stepped up for Spain, leaving Netherlands without the trophy one more time. Iniesta was named the man of the match and was selected to the tournament all-star team. And Thomas Luna is coming in for Andres Iniesta. 1.5 million market value and up to 94 potential on him. He's currently 63 rated center midfielder but let's convert him to a left midfielder to fit him in to the squad. And the last player in our first 11 is going to be from 2022 World Cup winner Argentinian side. Lionel Messi came extremely close on winning the trophy in 2014. In addition to his 4 goals and an assist, he won the World Cup Golden Ball for the tournament's best player. But it was Germany who lifted the cup. 8 years later, Argentina's captain was named the best player at the tournament one more time, but this time there were no bitter aftertaste to it. Messi finished the tournament with 7 goals and 3 assists in his 7 appearances. And overall, he's the player with the most appearances in the World Cup and the player with the most goal contributions as well. Simply iconic. Julian Roman is the chosen one to represent Messi in our fantasy team. He does have 1.8 million market value and up to 94 potential. With this addition, our first 11 is assembled, but we added more players to the bench as well. Starting with Italian striker Roberto Guerra. He has decent market value and great potential as well. Guerra is going to represent 1982 winner from Italy Paolo Rossi. He led his national team to the title, scoring 6 goals to win the golden boot as top goal scorer and the golden ball for the player of the tournament. Next player on our bench is Damian Hall, an English cam, 16 years old, 61 rated, with overall good stats. He stands in for Sir Bobby Charlton in our team. Widely considered one of the greatest players of all time, he was a member of the England team that won the 1966 FIFA World Cup, the only major international tournament England have ever won. That same year Charlton also won the Ballon d'Or. We also scouted Kleber Santos, young talented Brazilian center back slash right back. He is going to represent
represent Capita in our team. In 1970, Carlos Alberto was the captain of the Brazilian national team, who won their third World Cup dominating Italy in final 4-1. Santos was the last player we added to our team, so our scouting mission is officially over, as well as the season in the third German league, which we ended up only in the 17th place. But to be fair, almost none of our players have played for the senior team this season. Next season, we are going to completely change the starting 11. As you can see, our two German talents are pretty bad at center back position. Anyways, we are going to work on their defending until they are eligible for conversion to the center back. Other than that, we have very attacking formation. Luna and Roman up in the flanks, two camps and a striker in Ribeiro, Sierra and De Souza, alongside two central midfielders from France. Hopefully we are good enough to compete in third tier league in Germany. Well, not quite, exact the same position for us second season in a row. In terms of goal contributions, Ribeiro led the team but overall not very impressive stats among the squad. We need to elevate our game to get promoted to the second Bundesliga. The only change in the beginning of the third season is that Guerra overtook striker position from De Souza, cause he is slightly higher rated right now. Let's see whether this change will help the team to compete in the league. Not very much to be honest, we slightly improved our position and we are 13th in the league and that's it. This time it was Roman who performed in our team but it was clearly not enough. But on the contrary, De Souza got massive boost in his overall on loan, reaching 72 rating. Definitely he will be starter for us next season. And with this team, I don't see any reason why would we miss out on that long waited promotion. And yes, finally we are promoted to the second Bundesliga with 79 points. We are too good for this division already. Especially Especially after conversion two German CDMs to center back. Man, that was long. And as predicted, De Souza smashed third league with 34 goal contributions. Good season from Roman as well. Let's replicate this success in the second Bundesliga and get back to back promotions. We are definitely capable to do it with this team full of talents. A little bit of adaptation to correct player roles on the pitch and we are a Bundesliga team already. We won the second division with 10 points margin over Darmstadt. But in the German Cup we got eliminated early in the second round from Holstein. Francisco de Souza kept his high scoring form this season as well. It would be crucial to perform in the Bundesliga to finish the season in European spot. But sadly we are only 9th, which is good enough for the first season, don't get me wrong. Even more painfully, we lost in the semi-final of the DFB Pokal. Francisco de Souza and Roman continued to deliver for us in the Bundesliga as well. Gleber Santos have become guaranteed starter in our team instead of Werner. And by the look of the things, he is the lowest rated player in our starting 11 with 79 rating. We are so ready to compete on the highest level. Which we absolutely did, winning the Bundesliga with 75 points, huge accomplishment for our team. But again we came short in the cup, losing in the semi-final the second season in a row. Surprisingly enough, our main goal scorers were slightly less productive this season. Anyways we take it. But the next season caught me by surprise. We finished only 4th in the Bundesliga and we are out from the second round of the German German Cup and we even bottled the German Super Cup final. No luck in the Champions League as well, as we were eliminated in the round of 16, losing to AS Monaco on penalties. I guess we need to push even harder upcoming season, perform better on the pitch to win the Champions League. But in reality we lost the Bundesliga to Bayer Leverkusen. No German Cup for us as well, but in the Champions League we did significantly better, finishing the league phase 6th. In the round of 16 we eliminated Stade René on penalties. In the quarterfinals we beat Atletico 5-3 on aggregate and we somehow squeezed into the final, beating Bayern Munich on penalties to face Bayer Leverkusen in the old decisive match. Much better performance from our team, especially from De Souza, Ribeiro and Roman. They are the leaders of this team alongside Sierra and this squad is definitely capable of beating Bayer, so let's jump straight into the game. The first chance of the game Bayer Leverkusen bottled and we somehow managed to keep our goal safe here. But soon after De Souza missed an absolute sitter for us this time. Anyways, we managed to score from a corner kick. Our captain Milo Klein on the scoreboard. Near the end of the first half Bayer Leverkusen managed to equalize the score after horrendous defending from us. 
In the second half, something strange was happening. I don't really know. Firstly, we got awarded with penalty for this challenge, or maybe for a handball. But Ribeiro absolutely chucked it by missed time in the shot. But that was not enough for a ref. He gave it us with another pen in the 62nd minute. This one was even stranger. But luckily for us, De Souza converted from the spot, giving us the lead in this game one more time. Leverkusen had an opportunity to score from the direct free kick, but Haas denied Florian Wirtz. And near the end of the game, we finally had a good attack with great ball movement and the last shot went to Souza, who buried Leverkusen hopes for a comeback and won the Champions League for us. This was a beautiful journey, a lot of great talents we have found, but at the same time it was a struggle. Youth Academy scouting needs to be fixed ASAP. If you enjoyed this video, click here to watch me recreate all-time UCL butlers with Youth Academy.